Before we look at how a nerve cell gets excited, we need to understand what it's doing at rest. So when a nerve cell is at rest, it has what's called a resting membrane potential. And we saw this in the muscle cells. They have the same resting membrane potential. Both of these types of cells are excitable. So a resting membrane potential is going to exist at negative 70 millivolts. This is a number it would be useful for you to know. And the resting membrane potential is maintained by the sodium potassium pump. So here's a very simplistic version. Here's my membrane. Um, this would be the inside of the neuron, and this is the outside. So what's happening with this pump? This is active transport. It's transporting two sodium, pota uh, two potassium molecules in. So that's going to give the inside a plus two charge. And then it transports three sodiums out. So that gives the outside a plus three charge. So over time, these pumps are going to continue pumping. We're going to build up sodium on the outside. And you can see that this is what's happening. ECF is extracellular fluid. That's the outside. And you can see we have a high concentration of sodium on the outside. And then we're going to build up potassium on the inside. You can see that in blue. This is the inside of the cell. We have a large concentration of potassium inside here. The relative difference in charge between the outside and the inside is going to be about negative 70 millivolts. So a starting potential or a local potential is a short range change in voltage. So this is probably, so this is showing you at the dendrites, it might be changing in voltage because it's receiving a signal from um, a neuron over here. When sodium goes into the cell, this is called depolarization. What's going to happen here is these positive sodium ions are going to move into the cell and it's going to change the voltage potential. So from negative 70, which is the resting membrane potential, it's going to change. Um, usually this is going to be excitatory. It can also be inhibitory um, in a small range, depending on the neurotransmitter and the type of cell. If it's excitatory enough, it might actually excite the entire cell and trigger an action potential. So take a moment, reflect on what is rest resting membrane potential, how is it maintained, where are the sodium and where are the potassium at the beginning before the cell is excited?